Our final episode this year for Bulldogs Unleashed, brought to you by Reclaim the Game, comes from the Dr George Paponis Medal Night. And it's been a tough year for the Bulldogs, there's no doubt about that. But tonight we pay homage to the people who've worked so hard behind the scenes and right up front and centre in carrying the club forward. Betting takes you away from the action. It can distract you from footy's most exciting moments. Don't let a bet take you away from the match. Reclaim the game. Be gamble aware. The Ron Massey Cup Player of the Year this year is Josh Kaladi. Josh, congratulations, mate. And I'll tell you what, it was interesting seeing, given the number of injuries to the first grade side, how that filtered down to the Ron Massey Cup, didn't it? You had a fair turnover of players. Yeah, there's a lot of like changes going back from Cup to Massey, but um, just every week you just try to put in and win. So. It was a tough season from the Ron Massey Cup team, but it was also a pretty close competition as well. I bet you learned a lot from that year. Yeah, definitely, especially the younger boys like coming up from Flegg. They've learned a lot, like, playing against older men and stuff, so it was, yeah, it was good. And you played your fair share of New South Wales Cup as well. What was that like? No, nah, it was good. I love playing Cup. I just try, every time I go back down to Massey, I just try, work my hardest to try to play back up a Cup, so, yeah. Do you find it uh, beneficial that most of the teams play in or train in one big squad now at Belmore? Often you see each other and you can mingle with that, you know, the top 30 sort of thing and you get to know each other a bit more because there was a lot of interaction this year. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. It's good. Good bonding when all the when when all the boys train together, you get a like good bond. And so it's, yeah, it's good. So what are your ambitions, mate? What are your plans for 2024? I know, just keep training hard and just keep working to improve myself. So hopefully the next year we win, eh? Looking forward to seeing more of you in action, mate. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks. Josh Kalati, Ron Massey Cup Player of the Year. Our Hazamel Masri Jersey Flag Player of the Year is Lachlan Vale. Lachlan, congratulations, mate. Cheers, thank you. And it's been an intense competition this year, a very close one, but you guys have had a very good year. Yeah, um, you know, finishing second, um, something to be really proud of. And, you know, credit to the team. We've got a team that I think can go the whole way. Um, so, yeah. Big game this weekend against the Roosters, of course, uh, which is the prelim, but you were the top two teams after, you know, the minor premiership. So what's the key? Um, you know, just stick to what we do, play Bulldogs footy and, you know, nothing better than first versus second for a grand final spot, right? So, yeah. You had a couple of games in Ron Massey Cup this year, so obviously that's a stepping stone. You want to get a little bit further up that ladder and there's a lot of good back rowers in the club too, so good competition. Yeah, obviously, you know, um, you know, if I can just keep playing high level of footy each year and that's the, that's the goal and eventually NRL, but, you know, it's going to be tough because um, there's... You know, such a vast you know selection of back rowers that are really good um, so it's just going to be a matter of you know working and you know competing which I think you know is what everyone wants to make a spot so what is it like for a young player like you going to Belmore each week and more often than not you run into the guys we're talking about right now it must be a, a great atmosphere to work at a club like this with players like that yeah it's really um, eye-opening um, you know seeing them around the club you know just kind of shows you how close you are and it's just awesome being in their presence, you know. So not every day you get to be around NRL players. So finally, what are you working on to go all the way? What, what's what's going to make Lachlan Vale an NRL player in the next couple of years? Um, I think just being me and keeping at it, you know, and just having that resilience and playing footy. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Cheers. Thank you. Lachlan Vale, Hazamel Masri, Jersey Flag Player of the Year. Time for the winner of the Terry Lamb, New South Wales Cup Player of the Year, and it's Jaden Tanner. The Eagle has, in fact, landed. I've got to ask you first, congratulations, mate, but the Eagle nickname, where'd that come from? Because you know it's on your Wikipedia page. Um, yeah, so uh, coach asked me if I was, I was bringing someone to like a function sort of thing, and I just told him, no, I'm an, I'm an Eagle. You can't cage me. So, but yeah, um, it's sort of stuck sort of thing. Well, it's stuck well. I think one of your mates has definitely put it on Wikipedia but anyway let's talk about the season 
a dramatic one. You had a fantastic year up until basically the end of it, but it, it made me think that, uh, and we spoke uh, to, to the Ron Massey Cup Player of the Year about this as well, because there were so many injuries in first grade, there was a lot of rotation, wasn't there? Yeah, so we had guys just floating up and down all year, so we didn't really have like that uh, core team that just stayed in week in, week out. But it, yeah, for like 20 rounds, we were the, we were the best team all, all year and just sort of dropped off at the end of the year, I guess. But I'll tell you what, it would have been an interesting experience. You had some runs in first grade. What was that like? It was unreal. It was a dream come true. It's all, all over one of the do was just put the Bulldogs jersey on when I was growing up. So to do that, was, it was unreal. And given that high rotation, everyone's had a bit of a taste of the big time now. And it has been a tough season, obviously. But, gee, you would have learned a lot from this experience. Yeah, it was, just, yeah, it was a real eye-opener. Just sort of thing, just yeah, week in, week out footy. And then just having guys going up and floating in between NRL and that. It was just, yeah, learned so much, especially under the coaching staff we've got now. It was, it was unreal. What are you working on for next year? Anything in particular or is it just work? Uh, just whatever I can. What, just everything about, a part of my game. Just work, work on everything. And I guess long-term ambitions? Play NRL permanently for the Bulldogs? Yeah, hopefully lock down a position. That would be unreal. Yeah. Well, congratulations, mate. It's been a tough year, but you've been outstanding. Well done. Thank you. Jaden Tanner, who's the Terry Lamb New South Wales Cup Player of the Year. When you consider how many people it takes to actually run a footy club, people of all different kinds, both in front of the camera and behind the scenes, being Club Person of the Year is a big deal. And Mel Riccio in 2023 is that person. Congratulations, Mel. Thank you. Now, you've been with the Bulldogs for a couple of years, but I have to ask, a contracts administrator... What is that? That's all the playing contracts from NRL all the way down to our academy kids. So yeah, I do the contracts, look after the payroll, do whatever. I do lots of things, but yeah, mainly the contracts. So is your nickname loopholes or anything like that? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> above board everything's above board <laughs> now Mel it must be something special being part of a, a great club like Canterbury I think this is your second year is that right yeah, yeah it's like really the family club like it, it actually is that everyone says it and sometimes people probably think that's a bit of a throwaway comment but it's not it really is the family club everyone supports each other everyone's really good and yeah I'm hoping that next year we can do good on the football field and yeah I was going to ask you about that. Obviously, everyone looks at the pointy end, and that's the results uh, week in, week out. But there's so much work goes on behind the scenes, obviously. How hard is it for, for people like you who've got your head down, doing a whole lot of stuff, to actually kick back and enjoy the footy? Yeah, it's hard because we're always worrying about everything else that's going on. I'm watching games thinking, I look after medical and I'm people are getting injured. I'm like, oh, no, another medical thing. So <laughs> sometimes it's weird to watch games like that. But, yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Well, it's great to see that the people who do the really hard yards, not the hard yards you run on the pitch, but the really hard yards behind the scenes get recognised. Mel, I suppose, just quickly, your hopes for 2024? Top eight. We've got to do top eight at least. We have to. We have to aim high. Well, thanks to you, at least we know the contracts will all be in order. Congratulations oh. once again. Thank you. Mel Riccio, Club Person of the Year. Employee of the Year for the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs is Media and Communications Manager Caitlin Glanville. Congratulations. Thank you. It was and very much a shock, but appreciate it. Very exciting. And forgive me a little giggle there, because obviously when, when a season has so many disruptions as we had with injuries, of course, the performance aspect wasn't fantastic. The Bulldogs were in the news a lot, and that takes a lot of management. It does. It's been a very big year. But that said, there's been a lot of positive things to happen as a result of the year. Mm. I think um, one of the things Cam has spoken about really candidly is it's the Opportunity Club. Mm. So I think having so many young players come through and, and seek their opportunity and take it with both hands, there's been some really great things to do in media this year. And on that point, Caitlin, because of your role, you get to meet and, and really get close to a lot of these young players. And... What is that like, working closely with the team and the group? A lot of young blokes there who are finding their way in life, let alone football. That must be interesting. It is, but I think um, what we're building at, at the Bulldogs is a really solid culture. So it's a positive culture, and I know that has been called into question a little bit of late in the headlines. But what I see behind closed doors is some really, really great young men, mm. really great people around them supporting them. And I think that shows in... in 
how they present themselves on camera, on the field and off the field as well with different initiatives. So I'm very grateful to work with such a talented young group of people, um, but good, genuine, good people as well. And you mentioned off the field initiatives. That's very important because the football club plays a big role in the community in so many different ways. And you don't get headlines about that for the vast majority of the year. And there's a lot of great messages out there and a lot of great stories. Interestingly, we, we still do get some good coverage, which is nice. I think we've got a really engaged fan base, passionate fan base. So they are interested to see what we're doing both on and off the field. But um, to see initiatives like yesterday's Reverend Bill Cruz Foundation visit, getting some really positive co coverage, mm. that's something that makes me really extremely proud because these are the types of things that our, our team does do off the field. So very important work and um, yeah, very privileged to work with them. Now you've worked in other areas of communications and media, but first year mm -hmm. in the cauldron of professional <laughs> rugby league. I mean, that, that must have been some experience and what a year to do it. It felt like a bit of a whirlwind, <laughs> but um, you know, as much as we haven't quite got the result on the field as what we were hoping, we've had some incredible wins off the field. And again, I think I said before, we're backed by a really strong team of good people around us. And I'm just excited about what the future holds. One season under my belt. And um, now I, I know what to expect come next season and 24. And I think we're, we're going places. So I'm really excited about the future. And many more great stories to tell. Absolutely. And I can't wait to share them with everyone. Congratulations, Caitlin. Thank you again. Thank you. Caitlin Glanville, who is the Employee of the Year. This year's Community Service Award goes to Vili Army Kick-Out. Vili, uh, big deal, big deal for a club like this. Uh, it is, it is, mate, 100%. Uh, look, I came in tonight, I wasn't expecting an award at all. And, uh, yeah, to be receiving this, it's it's really an honour. As you said, it's a big club. And um, uh, to be re uh, rewarded with the Community Service Award, I'm um, just really blessed. Um, doing a lot of work. Um, obviously, the uh, use of this, the name of the club, Bulldogs, and just promoting the, the game of rugby league and obviously this club as well. Uh, not only here in Australia, but back in my homeland in Fiji. I know you've had a lot of experience with this, uh, of course, at the Panthers too, but the, the Bulldogs take great pride in being connected with their local area. And I must just say, you've had a fair bit of spare time this year. Unfortunately, we would have loved to see you on the pitch as well. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, as you said, obviously very unfortunate uh, for me. I wasn't play, planning my year like this, but... Um, big believe of um, everything happens for a reason and I've been out for 18 weeks on a back injury. Uh, I got the opportunity. Um, just massive um, thanks to the club and to Gus as yeah, we've talked about it uh, when I signed here about doing it and to get that opportunity to go home and actually run the Academy Run Time Clinic with uh, some of the guys here and yeah, it's been really helpful, man. Um, Hopefully it's just, the, it's just the beginning of uh, bigger things ahead. I was going to say, that, that connection with Fiji is so important, not, not just personally, but also for the Fijians who want to play rugby league. It's, it's a big thing. Yeah, it is. It is really big. Um, that's what um, um, sort of my goal is trying to promote uh, just the game, uh, uh, really into grassroots uh, to the younger, um, younger ages from, from nine till whenever they finish school and uh, that has been the plan and hopefully this sort of academy is just, just a, a pathway to sort of help um, kids get an opportunity to come to overseas and maybe uh, grab an NRL, NRL, NRL um, contract. There have been so many great Fijian players in the NRL in the past so that there's a lot of tradition there, a lot of heritage. I must ask you though, you bookended the season, you played the first few games and the last few games and in between there were a lot of injuries too. What did you see? I know it must have been frustrating for you and I know there were plenty of times that everyone was scratching their heads about the way forward but what do you see now looking into next year for this club? Um, well I'll put it under bigger things ahead, that's, that's all I'm saying. Um, I uh, could see we're heading in the right directions. Obviously, that's hard to believe at the moment with uh, with a lot of with a lot of stuff that's been happening. And um, yeah, I've been uh, fortunate enough to have a good relationship with most of the stuff and the way that uh, things are run here. Obviously, I've come from um, you know, a successful club and I know how successful uh, club train and how they run. And um, we've got a good um, 
thing going on here. Um, it's it's a, it's a bit of a process and it's a bit of a journey. Everything's everything is a journey and um, a yeah, long process, but we're trusting the process and um, we're hoping next year is going to be a big year. Well, it's still possible because you know as well as I do in this game that even though things might look bleak, they can also turn around very quickly. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. That that shows in every in every rugby league game, week in, week out. Um, as of this year, just shows that uh, the competition is so close, can't really separate teams in. In obviously top eight teams, the points are just too close, and yeah, hopefully that's that's the goal in the in the near future. Bulldogs um, to be playing finals. Well, we're so pleased to have you on board, mate. And uh, I know it's been a tough year personally as well as for the club, but we're looking forward to seeing a lot more next year. Congratulations. Cheers. Thank you, mate. I don't think it's any surprise this year the Coaches Award goes to Jacob Kiraz. I mean, the effort, the passion, it's just unrivaled, mate. We're very proud of you. A strange season, though, I know, in a lot of ways. But firstly, from the point of view of injuries, you really battled through, didn't you? Yeah, um, you know, round one, well, a um, couple of days before round one, I um, had an ankle injury and um, it was two days before, so I didn't really think I was going to play. But, you know, thank God for my coach and thank God for everyone. You know, um, they made me stay positive and I did everything in my will to be able to play that game and you know I played it and yeah obviously this year hasn't been um, the way I wanted it to with injuries wise but you know I'll do I'll do anything for this club and I'll do my best to be a professional to get myself ready to go on the field every week. Uh, I love the way that shows I know you don't do it on purpose but everyone sees whoever watches the game of rugby league how much you put into this game and, and to this club and um, just tell us what it does mean to you. Yeah it means a lot. Um, you know, I got caught on shock a bit when I got the award. Um, it means a lot, honestly. Um, you know, this club gave me my opportunity last year. And, you know, I always said as soon as they gave me an opportunity, you know, um, straight away when I wanted to re-sign. And then I always wanted to repay the club by giving every week efforts. I know the club hasn't been um, doing the best as the last couple of years. And, you know, I want to give the fans something to be excited about, especially with the crew we got and, you know, for the future. So I said every time I go out there, I just want to, you know, not to let the jersey down and like just take every opportunity as I can because I know you know it could be my last um, and you know every kid's dream is to play so I don't want to take advantage of it. There were plenty of times this year that back line of ours really sang. What's it like being part of that? Yeah it's amazing you know you got Foxy the loud one on the other side <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so it's, it's been good you know the first couple of um, weeks was you know I think our back five was first in metres for the first five rounds so we were doing really good um, and yeah, I was really excited to be a part of it, you know, um, especially myself, my second year, we had um, young Paulie's first year, we had Hayes, um, you know, we had an exciting crew, um, we had Avo, I was outside Avos, which was mad, and um, yeah, obviously, like I said, you had Foxy on the other side, <laughs> just <laughs> loud mouthing. <laughs> well, there was a fair bit of stability there, but there was also a lot of change yeah. too, you know, it was pretty, I don't know how many times we put the same team on the park for two weeks in a row, but th that's not easy either, even though we know you train together, there's nothing like games together. Yeah, obviously, you know, you... When you, um, when you have the same team every week, it helps. You know, you try and obviously train with the pre-season team and then when you go out and play, you've got that combos going. But when it does change, you know, it's hard to be able to adapt to that. But, you know, like I said, as, um, as an as a athlete and as our role, it's always next man up. So whoever it is should be able to come and do the job. And so there's no, you know, there's no confusion around it. But, you know, it is hard, obviously, when the team changes every week, seeing, you know, some players, some players, you know, um, you know, get it falling out of the team and it is upsetting even for myself and you know I'm um, lucky we've got a strong family club and you know everything happens for a reason and I feel like you know if that, that does if that does happen to all the boys you know they know that they have to you know the, um, try their very best to get back and they will because they know you know this family club and everyone just wants what's best for them. Finally mate injuries aside of course assuming everyone's healthy but what are you going to work on for next year what do you want to make better in your game? Yeah I just want to be more of um, more of a leader um, you know, I, was, I just want to be more of a leader. This year was my second year, so I kind of thought um, I had to take a step back in that because I felt like, um, you know, um, it's my second year. Like, why do, I can't say anything, but, you know, like, I feel like, you know, I want to win so much, and I feel like when you want to win that bad, you need to sometimes, you know, it, it's going to be tough, but sometimes you have to hold those people accountable, um, you know, the boys, and if you re really want to win, it all comes out of love. So that's my next, um, you know, that's my next responsibility for myself, and... I really want to, you know, become a leader and I really want to see this club succeed and I can't wait to be a part of it. Well, everyone loves watching you play, mate, and they love watching you succeed too. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks to all the fans as well. Jacob Kiraz with the Coach's Award.
just a moment. We've got the Steve Mortimer Rookie of the Year Award, the Carolyn O'Day Members Player of the Year, and now the Dr. George Paponis Medal, and a wheelbarrow with which to take it all away. Jacob Preston, congratulations, mate. It's been quite a night. Yeah, thank you, mate. It's, um, I'm very honoured, very honoured. It's been um, definitely a, a night I remember. I have to ask, start of the year, let's get back before the trials even. What were you thinking? What was going to be a good year for you when you were back then? To be honest, mate, I was just stoked to be training full-time with first grade. And, um, yeah, coming into the trials, I was just um, hoping to push my, my claim to get a, get a, kind of get a game there. And, um, yeah, I was just hoping I could get a, get a run at the start of the year. So. Well, you would have noticed people were noticing you even during the trials. So going into the early parts of the season, it must have been starting to feel like you got a bit of a rhythm, a bit of a feel for first grade. How was it? Yeah, so after my um, my debut, I kind of, like I say, when you debut, you like you always spend your whole life trying to debut, but once you debut, you just want to play more. So that's exactly what I experienced. And, um, yeah, kind of got a, got my first start round two, and then um, from there I just, yeah, tried my, tried my best every week. And it, kind of fell into place, um, but um, yeah, I've enjoyed it. So, yeah. Well, you must have a very proud family, and I believe a few of them were here tonight, is that right? Yeah, my mum and stepdad were here, but um, dad and their, uh, her partner, jo uh, Jody, um, his partner, sorry, Jody, uh, weren't here tonight, but um, they're all extremely proud of me, so, um, and I, I love them, they love them all, they've been, um, they've all been so important in my journey, and um, I can't thank them enough for that. So I think you're going to be diplomatic here, but where do you get your work ethic from? Yeah, nah, both mum and dad, and both their partners. They're, they're honestly, they, they um, and even my grandparents. They're like, yeah, they all. Uh, my family's always um, talks about hard work being um, very important, and yeah, I've just tried to embrace their their um, their, their lead, I guess. It's a young team, mate. Obviously, uh, statistically, the youngest team in the league, and uh, that must be interesting too, being part of something that's growing, developing at the club. Yeah, now we've got a, I think we had the most debuts this year. So it was a very young team, but uh, it's de we're definitely on in the right direction. Zero's got, um, has implemented a, like a system that's unbelievable, honestly, and I just can't wait. I just know it's going to work, so I just can't wait to see. Yeah. I know it was a tough year, but there's some characters out there, and there's a lot of talent as well in different parts of the uh, team. What was it like? Were you enjoying your footy? Mate, I was just, every game, to be playing first grade is un unbelievable, to be honest. So I grew up the biggest footy nerd, and yeah, every time I ran out, I just, yeah, cherished it so much. Tonight we celebrated people at the club at all different levels, you know, behind the scenes, people on the field, people who train and coach. What is it like being part of the whole giant Canterbury Bankstown Rugby League Club? They, they say it's a family, a family club, and it really is. Um, from the coaches, the, the support staff, to the media team, to uh, the board members, everyone, everyone's there for each other. So yeah, it's very special. Now, rookie years are not always easy, but this year particularly is what you call character building. That's, that's what they say in the game when you have a year like this. It builds character. I'm sure Ciro has said that many times. How has it been for you? Yeah, like I said, I just, yeah, to be playing in NRL, it's been um, pretty crazy. And yeah, like we, might, we didn't have the success that we hoped for, but I definitely got a lot of le lessons out of this year, and that's the, that's the main thing. Yeah, you, you don't learn too much when things are going really easy for you, and this year I reckon there'd be a lot of interesting things. What are you going to work on for next year, for example? Yeah, so some movements in my defence and also my communication out there under fatigue. Uh, that definitely needs to improve, and I uh, can't wait to get into pre-season and uh, improve that. A few new players coming into the side, of course, but you've also got a core of young players, as I said, not just to, who saw a lot of first grade this year, but also New South Wales Cup. There was a pretty high rotation, as you mentioned earlier, of players through that group. So there's a larger, younger squad. Does it feel good being part of that? 100%, mate. There's good times coming to this club, and, uh, yeah, it's a privilege to be part of it. What are your goals for 2024? Just continue, continue to build on my game, um, continue to work hard, and never take anything for granted. Well, it's always a big sign when people from other clubs, pe fans of other clubs say they love watching you play. And trust me, they do. Jacob Preston, congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it. Cheers. Jacob Preston, who's won a stack of awards this season, but the Dr. George Paponis medal hangs around his neck.